make sure that we're moving forward and working together. Um, we still have a few people who are supposed to be joining and a few people who canceled and couldn't make it today. Uh, we, we know that the um, new strain has uh, been causing some, some um, uh, little concern from everyone. So hopefully we can, we can all stay safe. Uh, so before we go into the actual topic, what I would like to do is, uh, since we are a very small group, uh, we'll just pass around the mic and you tell us who you are and uh, who you're representing. And we'll start. Thank you. I'm the Green Mask. No, everybody's the Green Mask. So my name is Petri Salo. I'm the, from the MFA, Minister for Foreign Affairs. Now uh, the special envoy for the Sahel and uh, West Africa. Previously been working a couple of years in the Africa department, mainly dealing with North Africa and some financing issues also in communications and administration, but I had uh, before that, uh, well, I was four years as ambassador in, in South Africa, also, also accredited to uh, Mauritius, Botswana, Lesotho, for a short while for Namibia before it became fully fledged embassy again. And before that, I have to admit that my Africa experience was rather short and thin. Uh, I was mainly working with Russia and the former Soviet uh, states, notably then uh, uh, Southern Caucasus. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Anthony. I'm also from the Ministry for Foreign Affairs of Finland, uh, and I have been working with the lovely people uh, in Think Africa um, and uh, the partners on organizing this event and uh, being the contact point between uh, the MFA and this event. Thank you. Hello, I'm Usenuba. I'm from Senegal and uh, I'm very happy to be here. Okay, hello. My name is Mervi Ukkonen. I'm from FCA Investments. And we invest in small and medium-sized enterprises in Kenya and Uganda and Somalia. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. My name is Teemu Merilainen. I'm from Ambitious Africa. We work with uh, young people and companies and other stakeholders from, Nordic, from the Nordics and uh, African countries with the triple model uh, focusing on entrepreneurship, enter entertainment, and education. Yep. I'm doc Dr. Do Pascal. Uh, I'm the president of one of the youngest uh, organizations in Turku called uh, the Diaspora Academic Network for Africa was launched last week, Friday, by the Commissioner of the African Union. Um, and I, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs participated. The European Commission is open with headquarters in Turku, uh, with branch office in Berlin and in California to mobilize African di the expertise of African diaspora to support African universities. Hi, uh, my name is Yolokeni Leskela. I'm a volunteer at Think Africa, but I also work at Funzi, which is a mobile ed tech company that targets um, African and Asian countries. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Miriam Munezero, and I'm the chairperson of Think Africa, and I welcome you all to Think Africa Week. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Jukka Lehtinen. I'm the member of the board in Think Africa, volunteer, 
and I also work for the Block Solution, which is a startup for East African countries uh, and uh, uh, related to recycling and construction. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Meraf Tesfaye, and I'm from Obo Academy University. And uh, we've been working on projects relating to African universities, mainly con related to human rights. But now we're moving to social justice and innovation. And I'm here to possibly find a network. <laughs> That's nice. Hey, everybody. I'm Oki, one of the co-founders of Remote, together with Pierre Jallo. And uh, I'm also here to run the workshop with you guys later today. Yeah, Gilbert, it's my name. I'm also here representing uh, Think Africa. And on the side, I I help out with the uh, artisanal miners in Cameroon to be more compliant to European buying, to European buyers. Good morning, everyone. My name is Patrick. I'm from Fin Partnership. I'll be talking a lot more in, in just a while. So maybe that's it for me for now. All right, and I'm Pierre Jallo co-founder of Remode, which is a market entry company uh, focused in the African continent, um, connecting the African continent, of course, and the Nordics. Uh, we know we're all here because of Africa-related issues, and we know the scramble is on, um, and everybody has their paws open. In fact, last week we were uh, attending the uh, Nordic Nigeria Connect in Lagos, and right next to the event, there was a Africa-Pakistan event happening. And, and you can tell every, every week, every other week, there's an event in different parts of Africa um, focused on some international country in Africa. Uh, so uh, the reason why many of us, many of us diaspora people from Africa, African diaspora, are here by choice uh, is because of uh, the systems that are in place here that take care of the people. Um, and there, there are some commonalities with the African continent in the sense that we treasure our people, at least we treasure each other, especially family. And I think there's a lot to learn from both sides of the, uh, you know, of, of the um, world both from the Nordics and the African continent. And I, uh, my true wish is that many of the things um, that many of the developments, many of the um, new innovations uh, that have been started, especially from Finland, can trickle its way uh, down to the African continent. But not in a way that you take and dump, but in a kind of a, a partnership kind of model. Uh, so today, what we want to really try to focus on is the <laughs> Google Maps, something else. <laughs> what we really want to focus on today um, is the importance of the African diaspora in getting this message across, in making sure that Finland actually stands out um, in the African continent as the scramble continues. Uh, so, uh, we have on our agenda, I think I have to press something here, maybe. Hmm. Are we using this one or the? Uh, sorry. Ah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Wrong laptop. Yes, so if you get the other slide. So, so today our uh, agenda is um, presentations from each of the partners, um, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Finn Partnership, um, and also from the diaspora. Now, one of the, one of the things we've talked about before, uh, um, actually in the beginning of the year, Remote and Think Africa started to work on uh, how we can bring the diaspora a bit closer together. Um, because what we've realized 
uh, was that um, there was a lot of frustrations from the diaspora about um, perhaps the uh, Finnish Africa strategy, um, maybe the, the lack of involvement of uh, enough diaspora, at least the actors. Uh, but then when we get to the ministry, uh, we, and also the other institutions, and other institutions, we hear the frustrations of, well, wait a minute, when we talk about the diaspora, who are we referring to? Uh, is this like a single entity, or are there like hundreds of different entities that, how do we engage them? Um, and we, we saw that there was a lack of, you know, a, a connection there, and we wanted to make sure that um, this was fixed. And we started the Lean In series, so Remote and Think Africa started the Lean In series, where uh, we had um, different programs, this is, this is actually the third now, we had two different other programs that brought in uh, both companies that have been successful in entering the African market, as well as um, uh, uh, consultants that have been doing a really good job of entering the market, uh, African market. And this is the third one, and we are so pleased to have been working with um, partners from Fin Partnership, from the ministry uh, where Anthony has been uh, the focal point uh, from Business Finland um, and especially all the other um, diaspora related companies uh, and organizations that have taken part in, in what we've been doing, especially in the planning stages. So some of these will be mentioned later as well. Uh, but uh, if we get to the next slide about why we're here very quickly. Uh, the outcomes we're looking for. So three things we're looking for today. Um, number one, to be able to identify the concrete ways how businesses are being built between Finland and African countries, both by the diaspora and by MFA. Uh, creation of an engagement strategy or roadmap would identify diaspora groups and communities so that they act as true business connectors between the countries of origin and the countries of residence as part of the MFA action plan and lastly, formation of a working group based on identified interests and goals to be part of the implementation of the action plan. So we are not just talking today, we are actually acting. And we have reps from the ministry who have dedicated resources to actually help us um, act on these things that we're working on today. Uh, so no pressure, guys, but, but uh, there's a lot to be expected today. Uh, so without much further ado, let's go with the first presentation uh, from the Ministry for Foreign Affairs. We've already um, heard the introduction from Petri. Uh, so, Mr. Ambassador, you're welcome to the floor. Thank you. So, uh, how should we do it? <laughs> welcome, welcome uh, to, to Think Africa events, uh, uh, which has a rather, as we heard, a rather uh, ambitious uh, point of departure, and and uh, let's say it must be, it also should have. Uh, so welcome on my behalf personally and of course uh, on the behalf of, of, of the ministry. And I suppose I should, could be bold enough uh, and say on behalf of the government as this, this uh, Africa strategy is really the strategy of the Finnish government, not the, the, the MFA only. And as, as uh, we were already told, uh, there has been as the, through the example, for example, from Nigeria uh, Nordic event in, in Lagos, uh, there really has been a big growth of interest towards Africa in the recent years, notwithstanding the pandemic, of course. Uh, and I'm sure that there are many reasons. Uh, the, the interests uh, of Europe, of European countries, of European Union has grown towards Africa. The interest uh, 
from actors like China, Russia, Turkey, uh, Saudi Arabia, Persian Gulf countries, uh, and to some extent, uh, United States as well. But of course, it has varied a bit between the elections, one could say so, uh, without going further into the <laughs> thing. Um, reasons why? Well, some, some are probably seeking more influence or more support from African countries to support their influence on the global arena. Some are probably interested in natural resources, abandoned natural resources on the African continent. Some may be interested in control over transport, energy or communications connections, which are of course essential to trade and investments. And some are maybe interested only in, in pure trade, and some then really uh, in, in closer partnership, in closer uh, dialogue on, on not only political but, but economy and, and uh, let's say, global issues as well. N notwithstanding, uh, nevertheless, uh, not nevertheless um, the number of African countries and, and their part in, in UN, it's I think more than a quarter anyway, uh, of the UN members are African. So Africa has or is really taking its, its uh, place on the, on the global arena. Uh, I mentioned Europe, European Union, European states, members of the European Union and also those who are not members of the European Union there's been a growing interest in these countries. And when you look at the map, when you look at the map Mediterranean between Africa, the vast continent of Africa and not so vast continent of Europe, Mediterranean actually looks rather small. Uh, so we are really, Europe and, and Africa have always been, of course, very close neighbors. And there's a lot of history, of course, uh, in good and in bad. For Europe and Finland, therefore, the well, African continent, African countries are particularly important as neighbors. Uh, the development in Africa, the development of economy, of uh, societies, of security, they all have, as we are close neighbors, they all have a rather direct impact on, on, on Europe, of course, and its member states. Climate change is uh, hitting us all, and notably it is hitting hard uh, African countries, almost all over the continent. Maybe notably in the Sahel region, but, but also in the south, also in the east, uh, and in the west. So countries who have least contributed to the changing climate are suffering the most. Uh, therefore, the, the ability of the African countries to adapt to climate change, to preserve biodiversity and, and meet the challenges arising from population growth by providing young people with education, jobs and political power, not only has an impact on the African uh, continent and countries, but also Europe and Finland. But from these more political uh, sides, I will just shortly present the strategy, Africa strategy in, in general, and then go mo a bit more into the, the let's say, the uh, subjects that are closer to the uh, subject matter of, of the event. Closer, microphone closer, thank you. <laughs> uh, in, well, we, we, in Finland, there was, um, amongst the politicians, amongst the officials, amongst uh, other actors, NGOs, uh, I suppose there were messages from the diaspora as well, as there has been uh, connections be between the diaspora and the MFA, for example, and I'm sure between diaspora and, and different business organizations, uh, that we would need a more comprehensive, a more coherent 
uh, policy towards African countries, uh, towards Africa. I tend to use the word African countries because there are 54, 55 African countries, and if we only talk about Africa, it's like you would only talk about Europe. America will be a bit different, uh, but even there, but, but there is at least uh, a proper focus. And the focus really being that we have to deepen and uh, widen. We need close ties with African countries, with the organizations on the continent, notably Union, uh, and then the sub-regional uh, SADC, uh, ECOWAS, East African community, even, and the Union of the Maghreb Arab countries, that unfortunately is very, sort of, at the moment, uh, not very functional. But anyway, we, we, we need to have closer contact with all, all the sub-regional and notably African Union. And we need to also, on the, on the global sort of and regional level, intensify our cooperation with, with the African countries on issues that uh, concern not only Africa or Europe, but actually the, the whole world. Africa is suffering not only from climate change, but, but uh, conflict. And there, we, one of the objectives is to promote conflict prevention and resolution by supporting the de development of, of peaceful and democratic societies and strengthening the crisis resilience. Big words, uh, not easy to, to turn into concrete actions in a short period of time. This is well like most things, of course, but this notably de demands patience and, and, and uh, nerves and, and hard, hard patient work with with uh, the uh, stakeholders with the states but with also the different sort of uh, groups and and uh, m uh, communities objectives include promotion promote relations between the EU and African countries based on reciprocity and common interest so as a member of the EU we are promoting our bilateral but also uh, the Africa African EU, African European uh, relations. Therefore, also one of the uh, objectives is really to, to, to support strengthening the role of the unity of uh, the European Union and AU. And now, of course, I will mention a bit later, but there is uh, hopefully a forthcoming event in February in, in Brussels that has been uh, awaited for a number of years now. We see as an objective that, that we have to promote relations at different levels of society, not only between the governments, but really, as this event is uh, proof of, we have to work with the, with the communities, with the NGOs, uh, support the civic society, engage in dialogue with, with various actors, including diaspora, academia, students, uh, cultural institutions and cultural uh, actors, and then there's the, when it comes to conflict re resolution, conflict prevention, uh, there's the issue of the so-called uh, non-state mi military groups. And that is a difficult issue for most countries supporting, uh, let's say, acts against terrorism and, and conflict prevention. But on the other hand, uh, the, the, our thinking also includes that uh, there is no military solution to to to, uh, to conflicts. They have to be they have to be reso uh, resolved peacefully. The main objective that, uh, in a way, is concerning this event, is maybe the one that is is um, regarding the or concerns the trade, and there's the. Some say uh, ambitious, some say not so ambitious uh, objective of, of doubling trade between Africa and Finland, between the African countries and Finland, uh, from 2020 level to 2030 level. Uh, how do we aim to reach that uh, goal? There is uh, 
need for having a clearer country focus, on the other hand, a clearer sectorial focus. And the, let's say, promoting business will be the key task if it hasn't already been, I think in most cases it has been, not in all, but in most cases it has been. It will be the key task of the embassies and the, and the team, Finland teams working uh, um, under the wings of those embassies uh, in African countries. Unfortunately, we only have 12 embassies on the African continent. By the end of next year, we hope to have 13. We are opening in Dakar. Uh, first official working at the Dakar Embassy of Finland uh, flew or is flying today to Dakar. So we hope that she and uh, her, her colleague that is also joining her, I hope, in the next three, four months, will, will be uh, able to, to do the practical steps as soon as possible so that we can, we, we can open. We, we have to, uh, or, or the objective goal is to, to increase ministerial or other high-level visits. Uh, objective is promotion of e economic and trade ties. And the core strategic team of all these visits and dialogues uh, should be uh, economic ties uh, increased economic cooperation and, and trade. We have to improve public, private sector, both public and private sector cooperation, and have a bit clearer export promotion goals. And really maybe in order to measure uh, better, to think of, of that we really have proper indicators to, for measuring this. Funding is, of course, always a question when it comes to business, when it comes to the economy. We have to uh, find ways for funding and services to better meet the company's needs uh, in the African market, the Finnish companies and, and uh, let's say, their partner companies, and promote investments both ways promote Finnish investments to African countries and also investments to Finland from African countries. We, we, we tend to promote creation of ecosystems with small and medium-sized enterprises uh, under the wings of some larger companies working as spearheads. They are the, let's say, the objectives. They, Government has appointed a interministerial steering group looking into and monitoring the implementation of the strategy. Their, their task is to manage coordination between the ministries and to promote uh, the sharing of information and setting of common objectives. This is, of course, all still governmental public service work, which government, of course, is doing. And each ministry is tasked to prepare an action plan for its own administrative branch in order to ensure a more detailed implementation of the strategy, taking into account budgetary and resource issues. Government will examine ways to enhance Africa expertise. We have some, but not much. Uh, well, in a way, it's understandable that there's, there's a lot of, uh, for example, Russo research in Finland on the Finnish universities and institutions. There is not so much of Africa research, but it is also, as has been mentioned in other connections, the interest for Africa is growing. So also on the research side, it seems that interest for Africa is growing. And this, in this, um, the government needs to use uh, the expertise more flexibly in the cooperation, has to engage more in dialogue, in liaison with interest groups, uh, 
in liaison with diaspora, has to engage in cooperation and schooling and training uh, in research, international job openings in Africa or concerning Africa will be considered when decisions or recruitments or secondments are uh, in such cases where gov uh, central government um, uh, is making these, these secondments, so, so then really this uh, expertise has to be coordinated and, and thought of. Increased cooperation with, with uh, Finnish Africa-related actors will continue. And the, it is the idea I mentioned that, for example, uh, on the research side, Africa has been uh, not so strong, strongly represented, but now we, we are also from the government side, we are trying to promote, uh, let's say, general Africa awareness and, and uh, uh, growing uh, interest and knowledge on, on Africa in, in all fields. I mentioned already that embassy in Dakar is opening. Embassy in Dakar, of course, mainly, main task will be bilateral relations with Senegal. But as it will be our first embassy in the so-called um, French-speaking West Africa, it may or most probably will have a second uh, or third, two or three other countries where the ambassador will be accredited to. Maybe Mali, which is a neighboring country to Senegal, uh, maybe Burkina Faso, maybe Gambia, which is Gambia that only has one neighbor, like Lesotho, uh, and Gambia, where we also have no representation. But before the pandemic, at least, we had quite a lot of tourism. So there are some of these interests that, that then play into the picture when we consider that where Senegal or Dakar, Dakar Embassy will be accredited to. There's an increased presence of business Finland in Africa also. Uh, they are now, they used to be at one point two only. Uh, now I think there's uh, Morocco, in Casablanca there's an office, in Egypt, in uh, Kenya, South Africa, and Nigeria. It, apart from these business Finland uh, experts or, or promoters, there's also so-called Team Finland uh, experts at embassies working uh, in, in some countries. So they are not working for Business Finland. They have been employed by the, the MFA or, or, the, or the embassy. What we also aim to do is to strengthen the, the network of honorary consuls in, 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 our, in African countries. Uh, in the countries where we have embassies, but notably in countries where we may not have embassy, but we are accredited to, they ha have, uh, in most cases, proven to be really invaluable when it comes to m notably promoting uh, economic and, and business ties. Because they normally are local businessmen. They normally are uh, well-to-do local businessmen with also uh, political connections. Well, I suppose in most African, in most European countries also, most influential businessmen have good connections to, to politics as well. We are promoting, this is nothing in a way new, but we are now uh, promoting, even with countries where we don't have an embassy, the so-called consultations, bilateral consultations, be it political, uh, but nowadays the thinking is that we combine political and economic consultations. They were called trade policy consultations, but we prefer to call them consultations on economic issues, on mutual and international economic issues. Cooperation, it was mentioned here uh, by, by some of the participants that uh, they deal with uh, circular economy issues. Ah, it was, yes, it was uh, circular economy, or, 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 yeah. And that, this is something where we also are now uh, putting in a bit of effort. There is a forthcoming uh, under finalization, a forthcoming agreement with, with the African Development Bank on, on circular economy. 
in, in, in a certain sort of uh, pilot countries. Because Africa is one of the, um, um, let's say, priorities of, of the African Development Bank as well. And there is something called, um, was it Af African Circular Economy Network or something? And, and uh, now, next year or 23, there has been a plan to organize the so called Global Circular Economy event in Africa. And we hope that we are supporting this idea and we hope that, that really it will it will materialize in Africa where in which country is still of course open there are a, a couple of or a number of countries who would be interested which is of course always very good also cooperation in digitalization uh, it will be of course affecting all sectors uh, can be considered as a sector as itself but it is affecting it's more maybe a cross-cutting uh, issue on, on, in all sectors, whether it comes to, to business or education or healthcare, digitalization is, is really changing the world and giving, giving uh, uh, more opportunities, even for cooperation. Two examples that again are not new in a way, but have been uh, there's been a break, partly due to the pandemic, partly through, uh, due to some other reasons. But now, in February, there's supposed to be, you know, after how many years of, uh, of not having it, the EU-Africa summit in Brussels in February. And, and later in the spring, in the second half of the, of, of the, of the year, we are hoping to host the the Nordic Africa foreign ministers meeting uh, in in Finland and more well, in Helsinki I suppose also has been postponed a couple of times because of uh, the pandemic all this increasing networks uh, uh, creating networks and increasing knowledge it, it is a uh, as mentioned earlier, that it is a, a subject and task that, that requires a bit of patience, requires some time. But uh, this, these type of events are, are one tool, one important tool. We need skills, we need good advice and examples, good examples. And uh, they, they, there's a very important role for, for the diaspora and notably the diaspora businesses and business people and academia. This is of course something that in Finland has been considered as part of the success in the last, let's say, two or three decades, the close cooperation between academia, business and even, even then uh, public sector. But I, I will finish here. I'll take too, too much of the time anyway. Any questions or answers, I'll be happy to participate in all ask answer questions. Thank you. Um, we're running a little bit out of time, but we'll take two questions. Two questions. Yes. Okay. Um, I, most of my questions would look like comments, if I should. Um, you didn't mention um, the role of China as a trigger for the much interest in Africa. I was waiting for something like that. China with one billion population Europe alone altogether about 750. So I was waiting to hear that. The second thing which uh, most of these discourses omit is a fast tran um, transformation processes in some African countries, which calls for this uh, mutual, you know, the, the interest. But they are, they are usually very understated. My first time to see 
you know, children who go to a nightclub and calling taxi and then they watch, they say, look, the taxi is there, was in Ethiopia. Even before me here, who is in, uh, in Finland. So it is important also to capture this fast transformation. Nigeria, for instance, is coming up uh, very strong. Uh, the third comment I wanted to say, I don't know, because that last week I was just filling the form to UNIPED to give my contribution about the Africa strategy. Um, I mentioned this issue of uh, embassies. The choice of Senegal is intriguing because the whole of West Africa and Central Africa is uh, almost two, 400 million people with one embassy in Nigeria. So it would be important, for instance, to know why the choice of, uh, of uh, Senegal. Thank you. Well, you mentioned Nigeria. Well, if, if uh, the whole West Africa is, is uh, 400 million, Nigeria is half of it. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, there were a couple of countries under consideration, careful consideration, uh, and of course, some of the factors that play in the role is, is uh, the, the uh, operating sort of opportunities and possibilities. And Senegal uh, has, uh, is, is kind of a hub of international uh, cooperation. There's, it's a hub of UN organizations. And Senegal is, is rather widely respected uh, amongst, uh, not in the region only, but amongst uh, on the continent also as a rather neutral player. And let's say uh, Senegal uh, is uh, uh, considering for a foreign uh, operator opening a uh, foreign country opening an embassy uh, 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 let's say that the society is is rather uh, well developed and 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 there is no major uh, di disturbances or, or, or conflicts in in the society there are issues like in e e all countries including Finland there are issues but there's no major major conflict in that sense uh, there was the first question was regarding uh, China. China. How could I forget China? Uh, <laughs> uh, China, in a way, was not a trigger. Of course, China, as I mentioned, that China's uh, uh, activities and interest has grown, but uh, I suppose one should say maybe that actually that the long history and activity of, of the e Europeans uh, in different African countries have triggered the interest of China. China has traditionally not been in Africa. Russia has, or Soviet Union was. And then when the Soviet Union collapsed, their representation and presence uh, actually collapsed also. They've been now in the recent, let's say, last 10 years, they've been strongly trying and also partly coming back. but. There, from our, and I would say that from a societal point of view of any African country also, it's a bit problematic because they have do chosen not to compete in the same fields and sectors and as Europeans and Chinese, meaning uh, trade, uh, investment, uh, and things like that. They are uh, rather doing military equipment and uh, uh, well, energy could be positive also, but they are trying to sell nuclear power stations to countries who certainly cannot afford them, including South Africa. Uh, so it's, they, are, they are coming back strongly, but they should be, you know, from there, and especially for their partner countries' uh, uh, point of departure, they should be more constructive uh, in, in their approach. So I would say that China, in a way, was probably motivated by by, yes, global changes and looking at, at, at Europeans uh, and, and their long history, as, as mentioned, in good and bad in, in Africa. China's interest is rather late born in that sense. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. <laughs> you, you can guess what I'm about to say, that there's only one question that was going to be asked, not the two, <laughs> as initially planned. But thank you very much for your presentation, for telling us the reasons um, behind the strategy, um, for, for telling us the focus uh, that you guys have. Um, and now let's call up uh, Patrick Bredbacher from uh, Finn Partnership. Um, to give us his uh, talk presentation. Thanks a lot, Pierre. Hi, everyone. Again, uh, nice to see you. Let me just try and get the, um, yeah. This is actually the most interesting part of my presentation. Will he get it to work or will he not? Perfect. It's so strange because, you know, it used to be difficult at first to get used to, you know, the digital events and, you know, sharing via Teams and Zoom. But now it's actually quite difficult to, you know, use these physical devices and change computers and everything. Okay. Hi, everyone. Again, my name is Patrick. I'm from Finn Partnership. I will try to be a bit briefer than I was uh, intending to at first because I know we may be just a bit late of schedule. Um, I represent Finn Partnership and actually the previous uh, very good speech provides a quite a good segue into, into my part as well because we are sort of one of the operational arms of, of the Ministry for Foreign Affairs for trying to get business to, to happen and to increase between Finland and well basically all of the developing countries but more and more increasingly uh, between Finland and Africa so that's one of our, our key priorities and one that I'm happy to say that we've also been able to to achieve uh, increasing and improving results in so we are indeed financed and, and funded by the Ministry for Foreign Affairs we are managed by Finland's development finance institution uh, Fin Fund we have been active since the year 2006 so 15 years and counting we uh, just got renewed for three more years which is uh, fantastic and uh, we'll be uh, sticking to our activities and trying to help help these things happen in the future as well well basically why are we uh, even existing well we are indeed trying to to help development happen through basically business partnerships, also through partnerships between NGOs, but mainly through a business. And the idea, of course, is that while, um, let's say, the traditional development aid and remittances and, and, and other uh, sources of funding and, and money transfers are um, improving uh, situations often in, in various developing countries, uh, they alone are not enough for us to be able to reach the sustainable development goals by 2030. So we really need to get companies, the private sector involved, not only because they are also able to, to make investments and create jobs, but also because they are often the source for new innovations, when it comes to, let's say, environmental technology and also frugal innovations, which can always be or often be uh, the crucial solutions. Um, our operating areas indeed cover all of the developing countries, so that's uh, a lot of countries uh, to, to work with. We are a team of uh, starting from tomorrow eight people we are all located here in Helsinki we used to travel quite a lot but of course these days we don't really uh, but last week our part of our team was with with Pierre and others in, in Nigeria and then a couple of weeks ago I was actually personally with two of my colleagues in the Dominican Republic so we've also been able to make some sort of like business uh, promotion trips also during the pandemic as well uh, right, this is going to be the main part of my presentation, uh, our services, and um, I'm not trying to really like, pitch the services in, in the sense, uh, more I'm trying to just give you a brief idea of what they are, and maybe then, you know, by being a bit more aware of what we can do, uh, we can perhaps then try to brainstorm later on how these services could be utilized to, to promote whatever we want to, to do. 
So we have a funding instrument, business partnership support, which I'll talk about next. We have a matchmaking service, which is intended to connect companies. And then we provide different types of information and guidance as well. So we start with the uh, with the funding instrument. Um, in 2020, which was a lot more smaller years, uh, year than the previous years, uh, we supported 53 projects with a total amount of about 4.3 million. Now, by roughly just quickly calculating in your head, you can see that that comes down to about 80k per project. So they're not huge projects, but you'll see, soon see why. And the reason is that we actually support the first few steps of the projects, not the actual investments, not the actual running of the operations, but more uh, the phases that help you get there, which then has, of course, an, an uh, effect on how much uh, money is, is required and, and used. Uh, 27 of, of the project, 27% uh, of the projects were in the least developed countries, and you can see that the share of Africa is is high. It's more than half uh, of all the projects took place in Africa, and this is something we're very happy and proud of. I think it reflects the increasing importance of of Africa and the increasing interest of Finnish companies uh, to to target their projects in Africa, because just back in I think 2016, this number was. 31% or something, so the increase really has been substantial. It's also something that we have been actively trying to encourage, partially by attending events such as this one, where we try to discuss with uh, perhaps people that are looking to indeed launch the project in Africa and try and get our help to help them. Well, who can apply for this support? Basically, you have to be an entity uh, that is registered in Finland, or if you are registered abroad, you need to have at least 20% Finnish ownership. But beyond that, you can be a company, you can be a toiminimi here in Finland, uh, you can be an association, an NGO, a university, basically any uh, organization uh, that is not, let's say, a ministry or a government entity. Well, what is the funding for? Well, like I mentioned, we are trying to promote development and business with, with impact. And that also means that we do not promote uh, exports or sales. Uh, instead, the projects need to aim at a long-term presence in a developing country. So setting up your own company in there, setting up a joint venture in there, maybe licensing a, con uh, a concept, uh, getting a franchising or maintenance agreement or other types of uh, long-term business initiatives. And what do we uh, actually fund are then the steps that hopefully help you get there. So people often come to us um, at the idea stage or a bit further than that. So then we can provide perhaps part of the uh, sort of seed financing to explore that idea, conduct a feasibility study, uh, find the suitable partners, build a business plan the steps that will hopefully help you get to uh, the end, end goal, which can be, let's say, a joint venture. And by the way, sorry for being quite quick, but I did mention earlier uh, the reason for that. Uh, the actual expenses that we can cover uh, are usually travel costs. Of course, nowadays, um, uh, people are forced to maybe conduct the projects uh, more uh, commonly in, in Finland. But uh, we can also support uh, work expenses either in the project target country or in Finland. And then that work can also be conducted by the applicant's own staff, so the company's own staff, or external consultants, whichever is, is, is the best person to, to conduct the uh, work. And then also we can support uh, a piloting phase in which we can uh, provide some financing for the equipment that you're looking to pilot. But outside of that, usually it's, it's the most common ways of, of utilizing the funding are indeed for the work that is being carried out. Well, the amount of support is uh, such that at the moment we don't have a minimum amount of support, but that is uh, due to change from the turn of the year, at which point uh, the minimum amount of support is probably going to be 15,000 euros. Um, and the maximum amount of support is uh, either 200 or 400,000, depending on whether the project is de minimis. Usually it's not de minimis because it's taking place outside of the European economic area. However, um, even though that is the maximum amount of support, it's very rare that the project actually reached that size. And that is due to the fact that uh, this support is actually paid as a reimbursement, so retrospectively, which means that you, as the potential applicant, need to be able to finance the steps 
first yourself and then you sort of send us the bill for the activities and we then reimburse a part of them, which can be, by the way, 30%, uh, from 30% to all the way up to 85%, depending on the country that you're doing the project in. Mm -hmm. Also, as mentioned, you need to have that long-term goal in mind. Uh, you need to be able to show that the project will create development either to, through um, uh, employing people or maybe some other way. And uh, then you need to also not have only the sufficient financial resources, but also the sufficient know-how and, and uh, staff experience as well. Well, how can the diaspora be involved in these projects where the two most common and unusual ways are as applicants themselves. Uh, we don't have sort of like data on, on how many of the of the applicants are, are persons of, of from diaspora, but my gut feeling is that quite often the applicants are persons who may have origins in the target country of, of the project. So that's definitely one way. And the other way is by acting as consultants in the projects of others. Now, unfortunately, we don't have sort of like any <laughs> direct tools to connect uh, a diaspora expert located here in Finland with a Finnish company that is looking for the support. That's something we're not really mandated to do because we're sort of a government organization. We can't really advertise the services of, let's say, independent consultants in Finland. Uh, that is a challenge because we are at the same time very much aware that having a person who knows the country inside out is is never a bad idea and actually could provide a lot of value for the projects. Luckily, what we've been able to find is that uh, independent uh, companies, Finnish companies, um, usually tend to have got quite good channels and ways of finding these suitable consultants themselves. So um, in that sense, it maybe hasn't been a problem, but we would maybe like to do more here if it were possible. And if you're interested in hearing more about this, then just join our monthly workshops, which are held online. They're free. They offer good information on, on everything. Right, just two words on our other key service, and then after that I will finish with uh, a brief talk about a specific uh, project on in Somalia uh, that we conducted a couple of years back. So not only do we have the funding issue, but we also have a matchmaking service, which is intended to connect companies from here in Finland with companies in our target countries. So basically, the service works by connecting these entities through our uh, database on our website, and then also through making direct introductions in seminars, workshops in Finland and abroad as well. Here's a bit more on the actual channels. So we do indeed host a uh, sort of database on our website from where you can find uh, companies from the developing countries by their sector or by their area of operation. We also connect them through digital meetings with Finnish companies that we uh, put in place and host. Uh, we have doing business with Finland seminars like the one we just mentioned in Nigeria and in the Dominican Republic where we connect the companies. And then also we have other workshops as well. So this means that if you're interested in finding new partners from a certain region or country, you can just try and, and see our database on our website, see if you can find a suitable, interesting partner, and we'd be happy to, to make that connection for you. And also, you can subscribe to our newsletter, our Twitter, and, and things like this to stay on top of all the events that we host and, and join them and uh, start finding partners through that as well. Right, then just finally a few words on a very specific project that we had a couple of years back. Now I will start by saying that this is not sort of like a routine part of our activities. This was a very special um, project. Uh, however, we um, found it to be very valuable. So it all started with the purpose of um, helping Finnish companies launch projects in fragile countries. What we had noted is that throughout all of our history, um, it had been very difficult to get Finnish companies to, to be interested in countries such as Somalia, uh, probably due to the uh, challenging um, circumstances in the countries. So we started off with the, with the mindset of, of perhaps there is a need for uh, more hands-on guidance, um, not probably f only from us, but from the diaspora, definitely. Um, that can provide advice, uh, connections, and networks uh, to actually get some of these project ideas uh, going. 
and indeed why Somalia, well the presence of the large and very well connected uh, diaspora here in Finland was one of the key reasons why Somalia was sort of chosen as, as the target of this, of this pilot. So the pilot was open for Finnish companies from all sectors and altogether some 20 Finnish companies joined in and then we had a lot of uh, companies from, from Somalia and, and a lot of diaspora representatives involved as well. We hosted several workshops where we were brainstorming, idea sharing, sort of building the business ideas from uh, the start to, to something more finished. We had delegation visits from Somalia, company visits and, and governmental visits as well. Uh, we drafted a guidebook to investment and financing in Somalia and made that available on our website. And then finally, in January 2019, we hosted a business summit in Mogadishu, where the participants of this project traveled and uh, were able to uh, present their projects and their ideas and uh, find some suitable partners. We found that this was actually very successful. Um, and it actually had a huge increase on the amount of projects that we funded in Somalia. So actually even more than 600% increase in the amount of projects from 20, 2006 to uh, 2018 uh, was achieved in the, in the next three years. So, so that was great and also some concrete business has, has uh, resulted uh, from, from all of this. Uh, at the same time, I was asked to, to consider sort of the challenges and the lessons learned. Well, this is no surprise, but it was a really time-intensive model, of course, of, of conducting operations, uh, which is not an issue of its in itself, but it does also mean that, for example, we're a, we're a program with a set mission and set tools and set models of achieving that, and then uh, the government has uh, also uh, provided us with the results to, to uh, or the resources to, to conduct those operations. So having extra projects like this, as valuable as they are, can be difficult to sort of do ad hoc. So there's a lot of planning that needs to take place and, you know, adequate resources as well. Um, also, uh, the government involvement needed to be a lot higher in this type of event than usually. Usually our events are more unofficial in nature and it's easy to, to connect mostly with business promotion organizations in the target country and host a business seminar through that. But here we needed to be a lot more like uh, uh, following the protocols. Um, yeah, as mentioned, this, this was a very fruitful uh, experience. Uh, however, unfortunately, it's it's not something that we are actively uh, likely to be able to repeat anytime in the future. However, uh, we are, uh, as I mentioned, an operational arm of the of the ministry. So, should there be a desire from the ministry's part in the future, then then uh, that will be the way to to maybe initiate uh, some some further similar projects in the future as well. Right. Again, sorry for running through all of this, but um, I hope to be able to have uh, told you at least something of value and uh, I'll be here for the further discussions as well. So this is our team. I have my business cards with me if you're interested to hear more and uh, nice to meet you all and uh, thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you, Patrick. This was great. Very good presentation. Um, we'll take one question. Very quick one. Ask a question if you don't have. Do you have yes. Uh, is there a follow follow up afterwards successful project or measurements results for those? Yes, definitely. We have quite rigid uh, follow up and uh, results. Uh, sort of like uh, measurements and uh, actually uh, we have just finalized our latest development impact report where we track the results of our earlier projects so, so definitely there's a lot of that and the data is uh, available on our website as well. Uh, thank you. One question, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but Patrick is going to be around so you guys can ask direct questions later. Thank you for that question. Um, so, uh, and, and thank you for the presentation because that was a really good uh, summary of what you guys have been doing. 56% um, focus in Africa, uh, being able to, especially with the impressive Somalia project, um, being able to increase uh, 
Uh, the demand by 600%, I think, is impressive. And especially being able to have that many diaspora participate in these, um, in these types of events is really, really good. Uh, and I do wish that you guys, uh, hopefully, Mr. Ambassador, you guys can, you know, give a little nudge for them to do it again. <laughs> Next time in Gambia, of course. Senegambia, I should say. <laughs> Originally from Gambia. So. <laughs> I see. Um, so since this is a um, program where we have the different representatives um, uh, giving their own perspectives, uh, of course, one important perspective is the diaspora one. And we have Miriam Munezero, chairperson of Think Africa, to give that. Hello, good morning. Uh, so I will not take long uh, because we are anyway li late for lunch, so we'll continue this conversation uh, during the lunch time. Um, so I've sort of been selected to represent the diaspora, the diverse group, but as it's Think Africa Week, I think then Think Africa should do this <laughs> in that sense. Um, so we are here to close the gap. And really the gap that is being referred to here is the information, uh, information flow uh, and information sharing. How do we bring understanding uh, between the different uh, organizations, institutions that are involved in the Finland Africa strategy, as well as the different diaspora groups? How do we uh, create how do we share information in such a way that we are all on the same page or same level of understanding of the plans that are happening towards Africa? And the second part is also involvement in the plans. Uh, how do the diasporas who wish to to um, be part of the development of their home countries uh, and when they see the um, Finland Africa strategy, how can they be involved? And this is also something that is not clear and this is the reason why we're having uh, this event. And the gap will probably not be closed today, but it is the beginning of this kind of discussions and this kind of workshops so that we can sort of um, come to a common understanding or um, identify ways in which we can be involved. Uh, so some of the challenges to the above, uh, to the two things that I just mentioned, information sharing and uh, involvement, is that, uh, the, which has been mentioned by the different ministries that are, uh, that are creating the action plans, is that who is the diaspora? So they have there's different consultants, consultants that they work with or different um, uh, or embassies or different organizations that they work with. But when we speak about who the diaspora, that is a question that keeps coming back to, to us. Uh, and really, at the moment, there is no sort of group or working group or a think tank or what you would call it that is focused on uh, business development relations uh, between Finland and Africa. Um, but it, uh, in realization of this as well, so many of the diasporas who are interested in this field, we had a pre-event to this one, where we came together and tried to come to sort of a common understanding as the diaspora, so that we could also have sort of this common shared or shared interest or a common voice when we come to this discussion as well. And um, what was discussed in this event that was held, uh, that was actually attended by over 20 different diasporas representing uh, different organizations, consulting companies that have been working in this field for many years, uh, connecting Finland and African countries. And the wishes that were made, or at least um, uh, the, I will present what the wishes they had and as well as what their plans are in terms of this. Uh, so the wishes are to sort of have clarity or insights into what the diaspora can expect uh, when it comes to the Finland Africa strategy. This will also help assess the value they can bring to it. The second thing is also to, uh, for the different institutions to offer or to open up more opportunities for collaboration. Um, this could be in terms of, for example, internships, where people actually learn how to learn what Finland is looking for and how they can better serve or how can they be uh, uh, be of more value. 
So more opportunities for collaboration. Then the plans that the diaspora, at least the group that met, what they are planning to do is to also have more discussions internally and also sort of cr try to create a working group or a think tank or uh, with the, the terminology is still to be uh, said, but it is a persons of people or a database of professionals that can be consulted on by the different ministries, the different institutions that are interested to go to, uh, that are interested in business development uh, towards Africa. And um, the diaspora also wishes or plans to also map out the value they can provide. So this is something that has to be worked on internally and um, so they will also work on that, as well as to strengthen the connections and relations that they have uh, in their homelands. And as we head then into the workshop, uh, so we have to then, looking at the wishes and the plans and the, from the diaspora, as well as from the ministries, from Fitpanship, Business Finland, uh, let's think of how do we close this gap? How do we start creating an engagement strategy or an involvement strategy between the different um, organizations? Yeah. Thank you. This is it on my behalf. And um, a Q&A then before. Yes. So uh, if you have any question. This is good. People are hungry. Excellent. We can ask the questions. I hope I didn't bust your bubble there with the with the food. Yeah. All right. Right. Um, the wishes of the diaspora. I think that um, when we talk about wishes, we are also talking about strategies because, um, as earlier, um, one of the speakers talked talked about the Finnish African strategy, and I think that um, yesterday uh, this came up as well that. Uh, uh, as as African diaspora in Finland, our the the stakeholders uh, and the 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 government agencies who are um, gatekeeping, if I would use that word, the Africa the Finnish African strategies are not getting a, um, a uniform message from the African diaspora in Finland, and I think that um, going forward, because I think that this has come a lot in this week, and uh, it's just you know not a coincidence that it's coming up again today. So what, um, what can we concretely, um, not just have talks, but what can we concretely start to build block by block to, to, to achieve this unity? Because uh, truth be said, we are quite segmented, we are quite divided. I mean, um, and it, it doesn't start from here, it starts from back in the continent. Um, uh, if somebody wants to fly from Nairobi to Dakar, they first fly to France, and then they connect to Dakar. Is that is? Yes, yes, yeah. Um, uh, but when when you, when you look at the sort of disconnection, is it is it um, is it an endemic uh, thing that comes from the continent, and we are importing it here? And if we are living in this environment where we look at, for example, how EU is united, for example, when EU goes to trade, they don't trade as Finland, they trade as EU. What can we do? What concrete blocks can we build? It doesn't have to happen in a day, but we have to have a strategy on to say, in the next five years, here's where we want to be. What concrete blocks can we build to achieve this unity? Thank you. I feel like this is the discussion for the workshop. <laughs> in that sense, uh, that's what we're here to do. We're here to create that engagement strategy. But there's a question from uh, Pascal, uh, Mr. Doe, and then perhaps you as well. <coughs> Sorry, I don't um, know the content of um, the workshop, but since the discussions are flowing, one just uh, has to move on. Um, I would share with you part of the discussions we had with the ministry officials, the EU officials and African Union last week. Uh, my wish as we proceed in this discussion is that it should not be an outshoot of the Africa strategy and that Finland should be very willing to come up with 
a Finland Africa diaspora policy. I, of course, for some of you who know what I've gone through recently, is a victim of trust and confidence. Um, there's, the, there's the necessity for the policy because um, I should congratulate the people in the ministry, the people high up there, the intentions are very good to open up, but sometimes down here it's a little bit difficult. I had a discussion with the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa where they surprisingly exclaimed that even for consultancy in Africa, Finns wants to be the one. They want to do it. They don't want anybody external. So in as much as there is this willingness up there, there are attitudinal issues down here that have to be taken into consideration. And the only way to go by it is to come up with a policy. So at our level, uh, the mandate or state or things the organization we formed is intercontinental to strictly come out with an EU Africa diaspora policy and not just to waver. Thank you. Do you have something to say? Uh, thank you. Uh, well, partly to, to what you said and then, then Mr. Pascal also. Uh, Yes, well, the African continent or the African countries between themselves, there's not always uh, unanimity. Of course, there is not always unanimity in, in Europe either. And I, th I think you are on to something very important that when diaspora in, okay, it's a bit easier maybe in a small country like Finland where I suppose naturally the diaspora is also a bit smaller and not so, uh, uh, not a big variety of countries represented uh, compared to some bigger country where then there's probably has been a bit more sort of demand and draw uh, from from different African countries but but if you I think that you're coming on some on to something really important that you as diasporas if you can unite here you can pressure your kind of uh, political leaders in your home countries to do more yeah I think you are on something very important. And, and I, I, I agree also that, yes, uh, from the strategy, the idea, one of the important uh, things to me in this strategy is, as, as a bit of a simplification, is really to, as partly is mentioned in the strategy, is really to increase knowledge. Uh, because we don't have enough of knowledge. And there, the government can promote uh, and do a lot but we want to increase the knowledge so that different other organizations like companies, uh, NGOs, will have more knowledge and through more knowledge, more interest. And there again, of course, the diaspora can play a big role. Thank you. We have you, one last one and then before lunch or <laughs> <laughs> last one, last one and then, yeah. Mine is just a comment. Um, I think that as an organization, Think Africa can have a database of every single diaspora here in Finland. But we also need to determine exactly what we mean by diaspora in the context of Finland. A Finnish person, if you mention diaspora, the lay Finnish person will think, oh, an immigrant because the, color, the, the, the skin color is different from mine. So we need to determine exactly who the diaspora, who a person, that person, that diaspora person is first. Is it the person who has a certain kind of knowledge from what age to what age? What do they have to offer? We need to be very clear what we mean by who the diaspora is in Finland. And then have a database of this, these persons which can easily be reached or, you know, um, um, implement whatever policies the, 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 the government has for this group of persons. That's just my comment. Thank you very much. So we've got another task in the workshop to define the diaspora. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for your questions and comments. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more uh, with both of all these comments that you guys have made. 
I mean, this is the reason why in the beginning, Remote and Think Africa came together to actually bring this kind of a unity. Because without it, I mean, even Think Africa as an organization is doing a fantastic job, but it's just one organization out of very many that still run different types of programs uh, focused on connecting the African continent or African countries in this case, and Finland. Uh, and, and therefore, we need to have all these participants from these different groups to come together, not only to be able to lobby uh, our own countries, but then also to be able to push the foreign ministry, uh, the institutions around, um, uh, you know, who are the extended arms of the foreign ministry or ministry of trade, uh, so that action can be taken, right? Uh, and I think this unity is important, and uh, we are on the right track. Hopefully the workshop will clear up uh, more stuff and, and developing markets platform. Welcome. Thanks a lot. Uh, let's see, do we have the slides? Okay, perfect. Okay, so a pleasure to be here for the, I think, third or second time. Uh, I'll present something about Business Finland and what we do related to developing markets spe specifically. And I have some ideas also for for kind of engaging diaspora in, in Finland and so on. So I hope to give you an overview of what we do as an organization and then specifically how we have boosted our collaboration with the ministry related to developing markets. Uh, let's see if we get the slides. No problem. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Yes, so indeed, my name is Christopher Palmberg. I come from Business Finland. Um, I'm actually heading a joint platform with the Ministry for Foreign Affairs called the LP Markets Platform, so I will say something more about that. But I'll first introduce Business Finland because perhaps some of you are not uh, aware of what our role is in, in Finland. Um, that's our headquarters. It's in Ruohalahti here in Helsinki, but we also have offices actually throughout uh, the globe, also in, in, uh, in Africa, in some places, etc. But this is the so-called uh, Team Finland house as well, so we are uh, situated in the same uh, office space as some other uh, agencies who are funding uh, companies and, and, uh, and industries in Finland. Okay, let's see, how do I switch? Do I use this one here? Ah, okay, so... Okay, so if you go to the next one. Um, this is just to highlight our strategy. Uh, this is uh, a new one, so this is valid for uh, until 2025. Uh, not going into the details, but we have three, uh, let's say, strategic uh, priorities or goals uh, to generate economic growth, uh, uh, address sustainability, and also increase competitiveness uh, and we talk about, let's say, two different levels. So our, our role is to to um, to do this uh, at the level of our customers, implying uh, companies, research organizations, various other players who can uh, engage with us through our services. We also have a, a role to play at the society level. So here, uh, we are really our mission is really to uh, through our companies and research organizations and other partners. Uh, enhance uh, competitiveness, growth, sustainability, so that they, in a way, um, aggregate to growth and well-being for Finland. So that is the, the core core aim we are we are we are working on. Um, apart from these strategic uh, goals, we also have kind of cross-cutting uh, emphasis. Uh, there are more kind of ways of working as an organization. Uh, I think in this context, I would highlight. Um, our emphasis on sustainable uh, business. So we have um, quite recently put a lot of uh, more uh, focus on sustainability, and we see this really as a mega trend. So we are currently developing a roadmap for implementation uh, related to how we could uh, better um, help our customers um, succeed also in terms of sustainability. So linking uh, business with sustainability, that is one, one of the key, key new elements in our strategy. Uh, okay, let's go to the next slide. Uh, briefly, on the kind of services that Business Finland promotes or, or offers, uh, 
uh, we actually have, let's say, four major areas. So first of all, we are the main funder uh, of projects in Finland. Uh, the focus is more on kind of pre-commercial uh, projects where companies are developing new products, services, uh, business models to renew their business lines or business activities. But we also provide some funding for, let's say, um, enabling market entry to new markets, etc. So um, we have that as well. But the main focus is on, on really on research, development, innovation projects. And, and here we differ from. Uh, for example, Fin Partnership, which you heard more about, I think, before before this presentation. We also support exports and internationalization. So we have a global network. I'll say something about that. Who are concretely helping Finnish companies uh, matchmake with customers, collaborators, uh, uh, various other stakeholders in in the markets. Uh, we are arranging a lot of uh, delegation trips to foreign countries, uh, sometimes including ministers, uh, always including companies. Uh, we also have certain targeted services. Uh, for example, we have a kind of a portal where we highlight uh, concrete market opportunities uh, for companies, whether they are kind of sales leads or business leads or longer term uh, kind of uh, activities for the benefit of, of, of companies. Um, then we have an, a role to attract investments to Finland. So we are actively uh, engaging international companies and investors globally and pitching Finland to these uh, investors. So trying to attract uh, investments to Finland. Uh, and then we also promote tourism. So we have a, an activity or a, actually a department called Visit Finland. So they are engaging in promoting Finland and the Finnish uh, country brand uh, trying to attract uh, tourists here and also international talent to Finland. So those are the four main areas, and we have a lot of different activities within these areas, but I'm not going into the details here. Uh, if I could have the next slide. So I mentioned um, um, the fact that we are a global organization very much so. We have um, our headquarters in, in, in Ruohalahti, in, here in Helsinki. Then we have regional offices. Um, in, in conjunction with the regional um, uh, so-called ELU, ELU centers throughout Finland. So that means that we can link kind of individual entrepreneurs, companies uh, to global opportunities also. We have this kind of facilitating linking role, matchmaking role. But then um, we have um, uh, teams actually in 42 locations globally. So we have um, uh, offices um, throughout the world, as you can see on the map. Uh, the focus is on, on Europe, uh, the US, and, and China, I would say. Uh, but we are also covering, for example, the African continent through our offices in Morocco, in Nigeria, uh, Nairobi, Johannesburg, in South Africa. And, and these people uh, try to also kind of uh, help companies in those regions. But again, our resources are rather limited. Uh, we work quite a lot with the Ministry for Foreign Affairs also globally and with the embassies. So that is uh, very important. Apart from uh, the African continent, we have an, an office in India, uh, Vietnam, um, Malaysia, um, etc. other countries in that, in that region as well, uh, including South Africa, uh, South, um, South America, Latin America. Uh, OK, so that is kind of interesting. So we, our role really uh, is to connect um, uh, kind of these global opportunities with Finnish companies even regionally and we have quite good databases of Finnish companies and we are actively trying to make that matchmaking happen. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, okay, so that's for the for the general part. So that's Business Finland in general in a nutshell really. Uh, we have a dedicated uh, activity that um, tries to connect uh, Finnish development policy with um, the services that F Business Finland provides in terms of funding and those other services I mentioned. Uh, it's called a Delphi Markets Platform and it's an attempt to kind of blend uh, funding uh, opportunities um, and other elements of what the MFA does in developing countries, developing markets with our activities. And here really our aim is to help Finnish companies and their partners develop sustainable business and access global funding in developing markets. Um, the idea here is that we try to find um, cases, usually projects, where there is both a business opportunity for a Finnish company, but
but also an opportunity to create local impacts in collaboration with local partners in developing markets. So we are trying to find these win-win constellations where we can kind of support business with impacts also locally in, in the developing markets. So that is kind of our mission. Um, of course, uh, when I say developing markets, it can mean a lot of different markets. Our focus uh, is mainly on um, certain, certain regions, for example, in Africa, uh, southern parts of Africa, uh, around uh, South Africa and, and, and those nearby countries. Those nearby countries, to some degree Nigeria and also to some degree uh, Morocco. Uh, then in uh, Asia, uh, we work quite a lot uh, with our colleagues in India and Vietnam and uh, increasingly also in Indonesia. So um, we can essentially, for example, provide funding for uh, various different rapidly developing markets in this region, but we are kind of focusing our resources and proactive work in certain regions where we have an office and where we have a close uh, collaboration with, with embassies. So that is the idea. Okay, let's see, let's move to the next one. So uh, essentially we had three, let's say, areas, functional areas or areas where we work in. The first is the funding work. Uh, so here we are pooling uh, development aid funding with innovation funding for, for companies or research organizations. I'll say something more about that because that could be most relevant to you. But we're also working in the areas of um, so-called international financial institutions and the UN system trying to kind of uh, narrow down the, the gap between uh, Finnish companies and, and these really big projects that are funded by development banks or come about through procurement processes by the United Nations globally throughout their operations or by the development banks as well. This is more, let's say, longer term work where we really um, have developed a systematic way to, to, to work with the ministry in both in Helsinki and, uh, and then also locally in, in, in the markets. Uh, in terms of UN, um, there is actually a, a, a kind of a hub in Copenhagen. So there is the UN city in Copenhagen where you have major UN uh, organizations also involved in global procurements like UNOPS. And there we have a guy, uh, Philip Bank, he is our close colleague, and he is also connecting Finnish companies to uh, UN experts. So we have again a kind of a what we call it the service pathway for SMEs related to, uh, to Copenhagen and the UN city there. But uh, moving on uh, to the next slide, I will say something more about the funding work. Uh, and if you want, go one more. Uh, so this is rather technical, uh, sorry for that. But uh, again, first of all, to make the point that uh, we, we differ compared to Fin Partnership in focusing on uh, mainly on pre-commercial uh, funding for um, related to uh, development of new product services business models. So these blue bars here, that is the core of funding. And here you have the big funding volumes. Uh, these green ones are smaller grants that we can provide to companies who want to explore a new market for, to prepare themselves for innovation. So we have Explorer, for example, where a company gets, gets some subsidy if they want to I do a market study, for example, related to Kenya or, or uh, South Africa or, or Rwanda. Uh, Tempo, that is kind of boosting companies' um, ability to, to uh, develop core skills and, uh, and first partnerships uh, on the market, again with the aim to then accelerate exports from Finland to the market, um, etc. Uh, so again, the focus here is on, on exports rather than uh, kind of uh, business in the market per se, and that is also a difference compared to Fin Partnership. These uh, funding schemes, they are more than uh, focusing on, on creating uh, new solutions, new products, business models. Um, what we can do as a joint platform with, with the ministry is that we can add a kind of a funding element on top of our regular funding for innovation in cases where a Finnish company has um, identified uh, a, a true need uh, in a developing market is developing a solution that is compatible with uh, sustainable development goals uh, and uh, uh, in partnership with a local entrepreneur, um, university, uh, NGO or other kind of stakeholder. And in those cases we can add an additional funding on top of the regular funding 
it will go to the Finnish company, but it will be earmarked for uh, the local partners' costs. So this is our attempt to try to enable local partners to join uh, these projects funded by, by us. And in those cases, the funding um, terms are, are better than our normal funding in terms of the funding levels. We can also pay 70% in advance. Uh, so that is, um, that is the, the funding model here. Uh, let's go one more slide. So this is just summarizing again what I just said, basically. So you know, if if uh, we have a Finnish company doing innovation or applying for innovation funding from Business Finland, if certain criteria uh, 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 kind of are met, we can add this additional funding um, to enable the local co-creation. So in a way, we are kind of uh, trying to boost um, our impacts. Uh, also locally through the Finnish companies with this local uh, funding as well. Then there is another uh, modality with Finn partnership. Uh, so we can also cover uh, NGOs, for example, who want to collaborate with Finnish companies uh, through a collaboration with Finn partnership. So that is also possible. Uh, let's see, one more slide. I think I have. Okay, yeah, this is uh, again just a bit technical, but uh, these are just the kind of costs that this uh, additional funding for the local partner can cover. So, uh, research development innovation work, but also kind of network development to identify investors, pilot sites, distribution channels, uh, feasibility studies, demonstrations, testing and piloting, and related facilities. So that is again a broadening of, of the typical type of work that our normal uh, innovation funding uh, allows for. Okay, I think I have one more slide. And uh, I was asked to also think about how to kind of bridge the gap between uh, Finnish uh, companies and diaspora. And, and just to kind of highlight that a common challenge I, I often see when I talk to companies is that they have good solutions, but they lack kind of understanding of the needs uh, of the specific conditions in the markets and cultures. Uh, so here, um, I really see a big uh, opportunity uh, to kind of engage diaspora more extensively. The way that kind of I see that uh, that could happen from a Business Finland perspective uh, is that, first of all, uh, our, com our funding um, uh, can only go to companies registered in Finland. But of course, if um, a Finnish company has a relationship with, with persons here who are from other countries, it would be really valuable if those kind of um, uh, connections could be, uh, could come about so that uh, people uh, who have understanding of the local cultures and markets would uh, be involved in the project. So I guess uh, one, one kind of takeaway is that uh, really try to engage entrepreneurs and companies by showcasing these connections and understandings that you have. Uh, so that would be kind of one, 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 one point here. Um, I should also mention that we arrange a lot of events related to uh, markets, market opportunities, uh, etc., cetera, in, in certain thematic areas. Again, many of those are webinars nowadays, and you can have a look at our events page and join those, uh, those, uh, those uh, events uh, as relevant. And there you have a good opportunity to matchmake and, and uh, network with companies as well. So that's another tip. Um, then I would like to highlight uh, Talent Boost Finland, which is a big um, scheme uh, at, uh, with the aim to really attract um, uh, talent from abroad to Finland to work with Finnish companies. Um, and um, this, um, this scheme provides funding so that it's easier for Finnish companies to employ or engage, recruit international talent. And uh, they're also running a lot of uh, co-related uh, activities with uh, recru recruitment, matchmaking campaigns, etc. in Finland. Um, maybe if you could open, if you could press, press this one here, I could just showcase you uh, the, the website. So I think this could be something really for you to look into. Um, there is um, a website which goes through all the, all the details. So if you scroll down a bit here, uh, you, you see some more about what it's all about. If you scroll down here further, um, a bit further, uh, even a bit further, let's see, here you have some, uh, yeah, okay, now a bit upwards, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> 
So here, yeah, so here you can see, uh, first of all, the funding scheme. So there is a dedicated funding uh, scheme called Talent Explorer, which uh, more or less works in the way that the Finnish company can, can apply for that if they have an international uh, person who they want to include and work with, and that will then help them to, to uh, engage uh, with that uh, international person uh, or, or recruit uh, international talent. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned, there are very ad other activities which are linking up to our, our uh, national level campaigns, etc. Uh, so, have a look at this site, really. I think this is, could be really interesting for some of you. Uh, I think I'll stop here. So, um, thank you. Thank you, Christopher, for the presentation, um, opening up what Business Finland does, and of course, the opportunities that exist for the diaspora. Um, well, we'll take one question. <laughs> that was a quick one. For help. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you to all the presenters. I have a question, uh, not a question, uh, not just one question. I've been listening to all the presentations and I just wanted to s come up with uh, maybe a series of questions to all those who have presented before. Um, this, the speaker from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is not around here. I would have asked a question to him, but um, my question is this. We're talking about like the talent boost, the, the, the need to bring in talents to work in Finnish companies. One thing that is overlooked or is underlooked in Finland is this very valuable resource that we have here, which is a lot of students who come here to study, study for free, almost free for now, and they're absorbed by different countries. What, is, what are these different organizations doing to make sure that they harness this great potential to, able, to be able to not only integrate them, use, utilize them here, but also to develop their, their, the programs that they're setting up. Um, another question I want to ask is from the person from Fin Partnership is, uh, with regards to sustainability of projects, one of the biggest problems that we have is sustainability. What, what are the things that you're doing to make sure that these projects that you, you actually go about uh, are sustainable? And the last question, seriously. Um, it would have gone to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but if there's anybody to answer, that will answer. The issue of the EU. Is the EU uh, more of a, of a barrier to Finnish African uh, col collaboration, or is it a springboard? I'm asking this because of the issue of spheres of influence in Africa and uh, what it has done uh, to maybe personal collaborations at the level of maybe high level and also person-to-person uh, -person collaboration. Thank you. Okay, are they all for me or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are really tricky ones. I, 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 I need, I, get, I, I can get some help. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, um, regarding the students, um, I mean, if, if you look at the startup community in, in, in Finland, I think there is a lot of multinational people working in, in that area. So in, in that sense, that is the, the closest personal connection I, I have uh, to, 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 that, to that group of students. So I see them very much present in startups and in, uh, in teams of startups. Of course, the Slush is another area. And we have these various, uh, I would say, platforms where I see them being really active. So. I've seen a lot of international students become engaged uh, through these companies in also in projects that we are have been funding in the past. So, uh, of course, I would like to see more of that. So, I'm I'm not quite sure about your question, how to answer that. That is not really in the merits of Business Finland. Uh, we can we are the funder in that kind of case, I guess. So, for us, it's uh, it's a it's a big plus if we have uh, companies applying for funding with multinational teams kind of showing then uh, a certain degree of, of kind of understanding of, of the different markets and connections there. So I would say that it's definitely a good thing. Um, the third question on the EU, um, from my viewpoint, just looking at today, um, 
the EU is developing a lot of new schemes also to engage the African continent, and we have been part of those discussions. Um, they are uh, kind of bigger schemes, and we have tried to orient ourselves into how we could, uh, in a way, activate companies for those. We are talking about Team Europe and those big funding opportunities that that certain uh, banks like the European uh, Investment Bank, etc., pro can provide. So on that level, yes, I would say that it's um, it's potentially useful and interesting. Uh, but still, I would say that maybe um, for Finland, um, I would say the Nordic context is, uh, in my own judgment, uh, also, if not equally important, and at least uh, very important, and the connections we can do there as well. So. I wouldn't kind of single out only the EU. I would say that it's more of an opportunity than a, than a barrier, but I know that, uh, that um, I would say that the Finnish brand and the Scandinavian brand is perhaps stronger than, than the European brand currently. So there is a kind of a double-edged sword there, I, I would say. You had a second question, but I'm not sure if I can ask that. <laughs> Actually, Anthony. Well, uh, on the point of uh, students, uh, yesterday we had, um, and in the uh, workshop with the Embassy of Morocco, um, we had a representative from the Ministry of uh, Economic and... Empl that's the name. I, I should probably know the name. Um, but yeah, um, and there they stated that um, there is this new program where they're extending the, um, the uh, period that students are allowed to stay after they complete their, uh, after they complete their studies was it now from two years to five years? Um, so that that's then uh, to try and engage and, and, and according to TEM, uh, the statistics are that uh, around 50% of those students that stay, the, the graduate students, um, become employed and uh, work in Finland. Um, so that's just a little bit more uh, concrete context. Thank you. I know Oki will um, kill me, but I need one more answer from Patrick and then we're done. Thanks. I'll just tackle the <clears throat> the one that's directed straight at us, which was on the sustainability of projects. That is, of course, sort of the key thing in all of this. And you're entirely correct that if the projects would not be sustainable, then maybe we would actually be failing in what we're trying to do. So it's, it's really important for us. So that's something that we actually uh, try to, to control throughout the whole life cycle of the project. Now, this is going to take some time, but I'm still going to do it. No, I'm sorry. So we start with the workshops that we hold, for, which are free for all of the companies and everybody basically interested. And our free workshops, which are arranged every month, provide um, important information on the sustainable development goals, development impacts, and how to actually conduct your project sustainably. Then once the applications come in, we always evaluate them from the sustainability angle and we utilize fin funds as environmental and social impact specialists to also uh, evaluate each and every project application that we get and to provide recommendations and requirements for all of the projects then once the um, once the uh, projects have been hopefully approved uh, then we provide free environmental and social and human rights consultancy done by expert consultants to those projects which are deemed to have the highest risks then, uh, once the projects have been ongoing for a while, they have to report to us to get any of the support paid. And that gives us a lot of control over the projects, because if you don't get some of the information that we require, or the steps that they've taken have not been correct and have not been done in a sustainable way, we don't even have to pay any of the support, so we can sort of like end the project there and then from, from our perspective as well. So that gives us a lot of control. Uh, we arrange monitoring visits nowadays to some of the projects. Um, then we have a follow-up questionnaire, which is mandatory. So even three and four years after granting the support, they still have to report back to us. They still have to show that the project has been going as planned and as required. And even at that stage, we can still claw back the money that's been paid if we notice something. Um, something that is, is wrong, essentially. So we've developed these methods for the entire life cycle of the project. Thanks, and sorry. No problem. Thank you very much for all you three answering the questions. Uh, of course, we're running a little bit over time, so um, we have to run to the workshop.